Good morning. Good morning. It's we're like filming, we we're filming on a Friday. I know. It's like it was meant to happen. We haven't done it for a while. It kind of sort of got to it. It's like, oh yeah, we forgot to do it last week and stuff. And obviously people were getting back to us and asking when the next wonderful instalment was coming, um, which is quite worrying in itself. Well, here, I'm going to apologise now for like the sounds of the trains because I'm not sitting here with the windows shut. I did a call with Manny Blue the other day and I was like, right, I better have the windows closed and everything. I was generally sat here, it must, I think it was Tuesday at like yeah. four o'clock or something. I was sat here just sweating. So I was like, no, I, can, I need windows open. So I apologise now for sounds of the lovely Woking train line. It's it's like it's kind of just sort of really muggy today because I don't know if anyone noticed, but it was like really, 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 really like fucking hot on Monday and Tuesday because nobody mentioned it whatsoever. The fact that we were hotter than anywhere in Australia and like Nashville and kind of, you know, you know, Malaysia and all these sort of places that generally are. We hit like the hottest day on record here. Um, and yeah, I came back because I'd gone to I stupidly decided that on the hottest day of the year and the hottest day of all time to head to Lords in the afternoon as you do went and sat in the shade watched a bit of cricket and as I was coming home I saw news reports that Croydon was on fire because uh, it was like fire. yeah there was like two really, was on fire. two really large like fire one of them about a mile from where I live so um yeah but more important sports England are doing really well in the Euros England are doing really well in the Euros. I've been to one... Yeah, I went Friday. That's why we didn't really film last weekend, wasn't it? Because I was at the game Friday night. And then, stupidly, I got tickets to the game Wednesday, thinking yeah. the game was on Friday. Oh. So I had to give them to a mate. because I... So my daughter, she's still in school till today. Some of us have been off since last week. So I'm in holiday mode. Picked up ticket, picked up two tickets to the game. And then I went to, did everything, paid for the tickets, went to book the car park. And I was like, it's on Wednesday. Oh, no. I go. She's still in school and needs to, because she's year six. I was like, well, I can't really take her off school for mm. the last couple of days, for a day on the last week. Especially if she's in every heat wave day as well. But yeah, I was like, oh, I can't actually go. But yeah, they're doing good. And it's like, it's yeah, weird because well. we're sort of so used to kind of being, oh, it's like a World Cup summer and things and then the fact we're playing in Qatar that's a complete other mess altogether but it's like oh how are we going to spend the time between the end of the season and the start of the next and it's like everyone sort of got captivated by the women's which is... I was watching yeah Germany Austria last night yeah uh, I, I know none of the players but again it was a decent game I've got tickets mm. to the final so I'm holding out that England do make very it. nice it will be nice. So, who, who, will, who, will they, who will they play in the semi? So the semi-final realistically will be Sweden. Okay. Who are probably similar to Spain. And then the other side, obviously, Germany have got through. And that should be, Fra I want to say, France or Netherlands on that side. So, yes, it could be all set at the minute for an England-Germany final. Very nice. Very that nice. That would be just perfect. Yeah. And, like, what conveniently... England's number 19 is actually, her surname's England as well, isn't it? Yeah, so England's number 19 is Chelsea's Bethany England. So, yeah, yeah like, that was a I, good number 19. I, I, think, I think we need to save the women's football one for next week because, obviously, who scored the winner was 20. Or not the winner, the equaliser. The equaliser 20, yeah. Yeah, but I've got, I've got some other 19s. Um, okay. On a footballing context, uh, one of one of Spurs' best players currently now playing in some. I think he's playing either in China or in kind of Qatar or something like that. Moussa Dembele, um, absolute baller. Playing? What? Is he still playing? I think so. Yeah, that's why when he left Spurs, he went off one of those contracts for about like five hundred Brazilian pounds a second. Um, oh, I but, might have to agree with that one, as he was Fulham as well, wasn't he? Yeah, so that's a good one. Oh, and then, yeah. as you were massively pleased with, that I did some research. Because obviously Ian is a huge ice hockey fan, and I'm like, kind of, it's one of the few sports that I'm like, yay, go sports. Um, <laughs> um, but so I sort of did the whole sort of generic Google, it's like famous ice hockey number 19s. 
And the one that came up was Steve Eisenman, who played for the Red Wings. Detroit Red Wings, yeah. And was a, an Olympic gold medalist with Canada, amongst other things. And he's currently the is he the CEO or the manager, like top person at Tampa he's, Bay? He is one of the top dogs, yeah. That is correct. I'm so very look impressed. at that, look at that for research. But the convenient reason why I'd sort of lent towards him as a great one, um, I still think we'd sort of go with Dembele, but he's a kind of great link in. Because I sort of pointed out he uh, was a Olympic gold medalist with Canada. And that's actually going to be sort of the main kind of focus of like this podcast, because so, so much of the things that kind of have sort of happened or kind of newsworthy and stuff kind of tie into a lot of kind of, Canadian artists and stuff, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's a bit of a Canadian takeover this week. So much so, we're not actually going to put in. We, I was going to put bits of the Manny Blue interview in this, but I was like, it's in a bit Canadian overload. So again, I spent a lot of time, probably must have chatted to Manny for about half an hour. I'd say 10 minutes about the new single, five, 10 minutes about coming to England. The last 15 minutes was basically just talking about playing concerts in ice hockey venues. And yeah. that's how so he's such he's such a cool guy and that's kind of a good way you know i was in sort of mentioned he spoke to manny earlier this week i think i spoke to him about a year ago i think it would have um, been i was looking back yeah and he's obviously someone we knew that was going to be playing at national meets london and now we've since we last one have had the full lineup and the day splits for nml so on wednesday the 24th at trinity boy wharf uh, Shy Carter, Manny Blue, Sarah Darling, Arbor North, Ruthie Collins, who we already knew about, and the sixth and final act on that day will be Matt Hodges. And then on Thursday, the 25th, Priscilla Block, Kyle Daniel, Candy Carpenter, and they have now been joined by the Wandering Hearts, Tay Bay, another representative of Team Canada, and Essex County. And we know so that's time as well now, don't we? So it's four to 11. So we now, because that was, I think, the main thing a lot of people were asking, like, what time is any of this actually happening? So, yeah, so we do now know 4 to 11. Hish will be DJing, obviously, between sets and things. Obviously, Matt Spratton. Spratton, MC, yeah. So, yeah, it should be a good couple of days. And the other thing with that as well, that they've, what they've announced is anyone that had a ticket for Tennessee Fields, um, if you, obviously, that festival didn't take place, but they've announced that if you had a ticket for Tennessee Fields and you kind of turn up showing that you had bought a ticket with Tennessee Fields. I think it's a hundred people on each day uh, yeah. that they've let in with that, which is really cool. And it's really great to kind of see a lot of the other festivals are kind of supporting kind of fans and stuff. The fact that that festival kind of couldn't happen. So yeah, so that's great news on the whole um Tennessee Field no, uh National Meets London. Meet fan. London and obviously we've started our countdown because I say we've already chatted with Manny Blue. We've got chats coming up already booked in with Kyle Daniel and Arbor North. Arbor North. And chances are we'll be chatting to more of them. Hopefully we'll get a few done before to add the build up. If not, we'll be there over the Wednesday, Thursday to chat away and get the gossip. Yeah. And kind of that's obviously in the run up to uh, the Long Road Festival and kind of a sort of a slight sort of link in terms of the Long Road that's kind of happened. I think it was Monday, I think it would sort of be by the way the sort of time differences and things work. But on the Sunday at the Long Road, Rissy Palmer is hosting her Colour Me Country stage on the front porch. And one of the acts that are playing at Long Road on, on that stage are a trio called Chapel Heart. Uh, and they appeared on America's Got Talent and received Howie Mandel's Golden Buzzer. So there's going to be a lot of attention about those three girls and obviously fantastic that, you know, they've had that opportunity and kind of been recognised and pretty much the whole of America seems to be talking about Chapel Heart right now. Yeah, this is what I don't understand these reality TV shows because obviously I, I don't know if they have a record deal or anything as it is, but you're like, well, surely it's kind of... They've got to be quite well known if they've already been signed. I don't. Up I, I, don't I don't know. It's interesting it because you you sort of look at things. Because I saw kind of with like Kaylee Bell, like the the Kiwi girl. She went on uh, auditioned in Australia, where obviously she'd been spending a lot of time kind of in Nashville and was kind of very well known in kind of New Zealand and kind of things. And again, a lot of the um, 
a lot of like the sort of com like uh magicians and kind of comedians and kind of those sort of things that audition for those shows are really big sort of guys kind of in the circuit and do kind of a lot of things yeah, anyway really so nice. yeah and it's obviously the, the thing comes is like the producers obviously know what they're looking for and kind of look towards you know things in any ways like I'd, I'd imagine that there are very few people that audition for anything like that that are just you know someone that's just sung in their bedroom and kind of their friends have told them they're yeah. pretty good and should audition um but you know that's obviously sort of great for them and you know good on good on old old howie for pushing the pushing the gold well, for them watched the, i've watched the video it's like they all kind of did it all together it was a yeah. strange one that yeah, so the I think like, I think it was kind of because they don't they don't show it kind of in sequence like how the auditions were and I think I'd sort of seen somewhere that like Simon had already pushed his but said he would have done kind of thing and yeah they basically all just like towered their hands up and then it was obviously yeah as we know it was Howie who hadn't pushed it yet yeah but that's also awesome. I say that's awesome for them and they're going to be a part of of Long Road and you know it's that's kind of you know super super exciting there's obviously a few of the guys that are playing uh national national meets london that are also going to be at long road as well shy carter um priscilla kyle candy tebe and kind of a few of the others um so that's cool and then kind of the other sort of news in regard to um like sort of we haven't really had any tour announcements that have kind of happened but we've had kind of the final piece of the jigsaw for country music week where we already knew that uh Tenille towns caitlin smith and then a matt stell and lv shane show would be happening and they announced that there'd be the song suffragettes tour as well with shows in glasgow are Moor on friday the 21st bushel london on saturday the 22nd and band on the wall in manchester on sunday the 23rd but they've announced the four artists playing so initially they announced carter faith who's kind of one of the mainstays of kind of playing a lot of the shows kind of in Nashville currently. They announced Twinny um, kind of as a sort of a UK representative uh, because Twinny seems to get booked for everything at the minute. Um, uh, Robin Ottolini, uh, who obviously wowed a lot of people at C2C and uh, lastly and most excitedly as well, uh, Kaylee Shaw, um, who's now kind of spending most of her time in LA, but was someone that was kind of a fundamental part to getting uh, Song Suffragette started. So that's really cool, especially, you know, to have Kaylee come over for the first time. Um, I, you know, someone I've been a fan of for as a person and as an artist for, you know, such a long time. Uh, so it's great that she's finally getting over and as well for Carter to come over for the first time, Robin to come back and Twinny to kind of get in there too as well. So that will be a fun, fun couple of days with Country Music Week. Gonna be, yeah, some busy, definitely a very sort of busy couple of days there. Busy couple of days in a month's time then with National Meets London and Long Road. So plenty to kind of look forward to now, which is gigs. It's been, a, I would say, quite a couple of weeks, but you've been busy with going to gigs. I have been. I, I have still been hiding away, just getting I have, the been, I have been a little busy. So uh, firstly, uh, I went and saw Morgan Evans. So I went to Lafayette for the first time, which I'd never been to before kind of a strange thing you sort of come in like downstairs you sort of come in an odd place and when you first go in like you kind of lose concept of where the stage is and where you're sort of looking but it's a cool venue um it it didn't feel as big as it is in a bizarre way it's owned by the guys that run omira as well um and it's slightly bigger it's gotten upstairs um and yeah cool spot it was really you know morgan put on a great show he was obviously over in Europe, kind of open up for Brad Paisley, who only did one UK show in Scotland, um, which I think was because the the tour, a tour that got cancelled or postponed or when he couldn't play a Scottish date. So that's kind of why it happened. And there wasn't a London show, uh, I think. You know, the, the fact is... Yeah, everyone he did that London. He played the O2. Everyone that lives, out, everyone that lives outside of London kind of berates the fact that we get everything and the fact that we get we don't get a show that somebody else does. It's like the end of the world. It's like, you know, like Garth Brooks, how inconsiderate that you're going to play Dublin, but you're not going to play here either. Um, but yeah, I so... That's, to Dublin. How rude. But like I say, so Morgan was fantastic. It was, I was surprised I kind of knew a few more of his songs than I did. Um, and he also played some new stuff. It was It was really cool. And it was... You know great to see and then after that as well i had 
um, kind of at a last minute sort of confirmation to go and see uh, Tennille Art, who was the first time I'd actually seen her before. And oh my God, how good is she live? Like seriously amazing. Uh, like played at The Grace, which is one of my least favorite venues in London, but that's another story. Um, but yeah it was absolutely fantastic to hold like her energy her stage presence kind of it's all great and again someone that you probably you probably heard her song even if you don't know kind of who they are like who it is and stuff um so yeah it was it was really cool and i spoke to her as well before that's a piece that just kind of come out uh and yeah she was really really great fun and you know definitely someone I think is going to keep coming back and sort of keep building because things are going really, really well for her right now. Yeah, because I don't realise this was like her fourth visit, I think. Yeah, so. that's and what I... She was meant to have done C2C because I caught up with her in Berlin because, yeah, she was obviously meant to have done the cancelled C2C as well. She did, she really she did country time. music. She did country music week. Yeah, that's the first time I met her. Came to Europe for the C2C that never exactly. happened here. Then she came to C2C this year and then she's just kind of been back. sort of back over and she had uh our good friend jade halliwell was opening up for her as well yeah um, i've got a feeling the last time she did when she was in berlin i've got a feeling she did a couple of shows around germany as well after that one i think she was one of the artists who was kind of touring before arriving over here and then obviously having to go home but yeah no i remember meeting her at say yeah the backstage uh the first country music week in i want to say 2019 whatever it was with Tay Bay, they did a little songwriters round. And then, yeah, then she was brilliant in Berlin as well. And that's the last time I got to see her, I think. Yeah. And that sort of leads quite nicely to kind of the main sort of reason we've got like a strong Canadian focus. We've obviously sort of talked about Manny. We've sort of brought up um, Tay Bay and kind of talked about like Tanil there. But Tanil is uh, one artist that kind of this week has received some nominations for the uh, Canadian Country Music Association Awards because they've got their kind of noms out. There's sort of a load of categories and things like kind of with the American sort of things that sort of focuses on like, you know, the radio and kind of, you know, managements and productions and all that. But obviously it is similar sort of thing to what we're used to. There's album of the year, kind of song of the year, single of the year, sort of video of the year, entertainment of the year, male and female. And then kind of amongst the nominations, Tenille Arts is someone that's received three nominations. Uh, kind of through the whole thing. There's two for Robin Ottolini, there's two for uh, Mackenzie Porter, there's two for High Valley, two for Megan Patrick, two for our good buddy Lindsay L. Uh, Dallas Smith, who we spoke to earlier this year, he's got three noms. Brett Kissel, who Ian spoke to recently, he's got four. James Barker Band, who have been over here and we spoke to in the past five, but leading the entire way, a massive seven nominations. Um, we were really lucky to see do a very special show around C to C uh to Neil Towns. Um so that's kind of the whole sort of run through, but just to kind of look at the kind of the three most sort of interesting categories really. So male vocalists of the year, uh the five nominees are Dean Brody, uh Jade Eagleton, um Tyler Joe Miller, Dallas Smith and Brett Kissel. Entertainer of the year is between the two Tennilles uh, towns and arts, uh, Dallas Smith, Brett Kissel, James Barker band, and probably the most, you know, I I think it's the most interesting and the most exciting because I think it's the category that has the biggest sort of impact on the wider scale with these artists, what they're doing over here, but also the way that compared to kind of the guys, they have more of the impact outside of Canada, like south of the border in Nashville. The Spotify sponsored female vocalist of the year, um, is between Tennille Towns, Tennille Arts, Lindsay L, Robin Ottolini and Megan Patrick. And when you bear in mind that Mackenzie Porter, who's had a number one single, number one song on radio during the last 12 months, isn't even nominated in that, that category of five, just shows how strong that whole like female sort of artist kind of bunch is really of Canadian music. And it's something that we keep talking about how, how great you know country music coming out of canada is right now now obviously we have had lots of interviews in the past sort of with canadian artists and i've got some links to there and canada's kind of where i got into the whole country music scene anyway 
partying at ranchmans in Calgary. But the bit I like when I saw it, Entertainer of the Year, we've interviewed every single one of them recently. And the other one, um, the Songwriter of the Year, we've interviewed at least one of the songwriters on every songwriter of the year, which I thought was quite cool. Yeah. And uh, also kind of other, other people nominated kind of that we sort of mentioned, Sasha, who I think you spoke to kind of before. She's yeah, someone that's nominated for the Rising Star, so new artist. And also our buddy Dan Davidson uh, has got a nomination as Record Producer of the Year for work on a song that he worked on. So all of those kind of will get announced on the 11th of September at the awards ceremony taking place in Calgary. It's kind of it voted for by uh, the Canadian Country Music Association members, with the exception of one award, which is fan voted, which is the Amazon Music and Alexa Fans Choice Award. And for this, there are 10 nominations. Uh, Tennille Towns, Tennille Arts, Robin Ottolini, Dallas Smith, James Barker Band, Brett Kissel, High Valley, Dean Brody, Jade Eagleton and Tyler Joe Miller. And so basically fans can vote for them. And Ian, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how you go about voting. I would love to know how I go about voting. I'm sure you would. Now, there's two ways to vote. So the first and most obvious way is you go on to www.ccmafanvote.com. And what you do, you go onto this website and you kind of come down and it has pictures of all these artists. If you scroll down a little bit, you see the picture of Tennille Arts and you click on the big orange box underneath her that says vote. And then what it does is you get a capacitive sort of box to come in to check that you're not a belt. And then it kind of counts your vote for Tennille in there. But you kind of, after you've done that, you're like, oh, in fact, it's like, I really like both Tennille, so I'm not really sure which one to do. But you can vote once a day. So then you can log back on tomorrow go onto that same website of ccmafanvote.com and use your one vote for the day and move down and find a picture of Tennille Towns and click on the box that says vote underneath her because obviously you don't want to appear to have a favourite. So because, you know, you can kind of go with that and then so you can vote one time a day. And see, that's the only way I can vote because the other way uses Twitter, which I have, but I don't use. Uh, so what you can do is on Twitter, is using kind of a variety of hashtags you will hashtag uh amazon fans choice and then so basically if you're someone like paul hadley who's really big on twitter what you do is you'd go hashtag amazon fans choice hashtag vote ccma robin ottolini which is obviously what paul would do and obviously if you wanted to vote for tenille arts it'd be hashtag vote CCMA to Neil Arts, vote for Tenille Towns, hashtag vote CCMA to Neil Towns. But obviously, if you really wanted to, you can vote for High Valley or James Barker or- I was about to say, other artists are available. Or Smith or Brett Kissel. But yeah, it was kind of just like, he sort of went and did it and it's like easy straight away. It's like, it's like, mm, it's like which Tenille do you sort of go for? But anyway, that's sort of mine. Um, so I'd say, so it's on ccmafanvote.com where you get one vote a day and you can kind of do it every day. You can probably do it off multiple different, app, you know, phones or computers or whatever, your mum's iPad and all that. Or if you've got Twitter, you can do it as many times as you want and kind of spam like crazy using hashtag Amazon fans choice, hashtag vote CCMA and then kind of no sort of spaces and just the artists that you want to do so like i said it's nominees are tyler joe miller jade eagleton dean Brody, dallas smith james barker band brett kissel high valley robin ottolini to neil towns to neil arts and you can vote for your favorite as many times as you like through twitter and obviously retweets count as votes i think as well um but if you don't use twitter um it's once a day go onto the website and then kind of scroll down and click on the orange box under who you want to vote for so yeah, that's one of those festivals that it really annoys me because it's always that first week of September and I'm always back in school the week before and it's not going to move. I'm like, I was talking to someone one time, I was like, I just wish it could be 10 days earlier. That's all you I need. Get out there for the awards. Two weeks earlier, I could be out there because, you know, we have, we've made so many kind of contacts in the Canadian country music scene, whether it be singers, songwriters, producers, all that kind of thing, even just sort of band members. But yeah, it's yes. that one I cannot get out for and it really annoys me so much. So I can't get out there. I will maybe send out some messages and see if we can get some behind the scenes stuff done out there. Because we did that. Dan Davidson, that's how he kind of first, we first got working with him about 
three, four years back now it would have been. And yeah, he did like a whole behind the scenes thing for us, which was absolutely amazing. So yeah, I might drop, drop some people a message and see if we can get something sorted so we can pretend we're there at least. Yeah. And Calgary. yeah, I know like, well, actually on the Calgary sort of front kind of, but lastly, it kind of leads into the thing we haven't talked about. Um, it's a really quiet sort of day for new releases that isn't a huge amount out. John Potty's put a track out of his upcoming album. Little Big Town have put a track out of what's going to be their upcoming album. But what we have had in the last couple of weeks is a lot of announcements about records that are on the way over the next kind of, you know, probably six, seven weeks. And sort of one of those where I said the Calgary sort of link is our buddy Sycamore. She's going to be releasing her debut album Pinto, which is going to be coming out on August 12th. Um, which I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing because she's absolutely fantastic. And I think what she sort of does musically is great. And she's obviously not the only artist we've kind of heard news of new records come in. Uh, Little Big Town will be releasing Mr. Sun on September 16th. Kane Brown, Different Man on September the 9th. Uh, Vandaliers with their self-titled album, The Vandaliers. I loved seeing those guys when they played uh, at, the, at the Grace a couple of weeks back. That record's coming on August the 12th. Um, we have got uh, Whiskey Myers of dropping their new record next Friday, uh, Tornillo. And also next Friday, Brooke Eden has got her new, P, new EP as well, uh, which I've had a chance to listen to. And it's absolutely amazing. And then we've also had news that uh, we already knew about Ingrid Andres, a good person. Her next record is coming out on August 26th. I'm actually going to be chatting to Ingrid next week, which I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be a lot of fun. And kind of the last ones as well, we've heard that on September 23rd, we're going to have a new album called Married Alone from Sonny Sweeney, who will be playing at The Long Road and at Millport. And also... We have got a new record from Kelsey Ballerini on the way, uh, Subject to Change, it's called. That is also coming out on September 23rd. So there is loads and loads and loads of uh, new stuff coming. Yeah, and today we have probably one of the most unique country albums of the year has been released. Go for it. Yeah. Sell this to me. I'm going to sell this. And I got sent an email about this yesterday. You know, like, have I read this correctly? But it actually is. I had to listen to it last night and it is quite cool. So... It is called Country Goes Reggae, and it features some very famous country music songs, but with a bit of, obviously, the reggae vibe. Makes you feel like in sort of Jamaica. It's quite nice. So we've got tracks on it include Chase Rice's Eyes on You, Make Me Want To from Jimmy Allen. So who, who's, actually, who's actually singing it, or is it just a compilation album? So it's basically it's a compilation album. So you've got, like, the artists are all on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, it's like so it's kind of so it's kind of like music. so it's kind of like now now this is what I call country reggae, like yeah, and now so, like seven hundred and ninety four. Yeah, so they're basically they're reimagining all these country hits with kind of classic and contemporary sort of reggae okay. from the Caribbean islands. But yeah, it's just quite cool. It's been quite well done. It's and I said, a mix of some very well-known songs, whether they be quite modern, as I said, with songs like Jimmy Allen, Uncle Cracker's Smiles on there. There's tracks featuring Alabama and Dolly Parton. So yeah, it's quite it's quite a cool a cool one to listen to. It's definitely, I think, a nice summer summer garden party background music will go down well. But yeah, just a bit of a unique, different spin. You know, I like my different spins on country music and the different places it can go. So, no, this is definitely one for that, which is quite a, yeah, more one of the stranger emails I've had, but definitely one of the more interesting ones at the same time. This this has all in all been quite informative and almost structured for a change, which alarms me that bearing in mind that it means that the way the universe is going to work, that karma needs to like balance out and something like chaotic is going to sort of happen in response to it. It's um, called week one of summer holidays and I've got nothing better to do, so. But yeah, it's, we've covered a lot. So obviously we talked about the CC main arms, we, you know, cover the news about NML uh, and the Song Software Jet show, all the sort of albums to look forward to. Um, we, we've still got kind of a load of kind of things kind of that are going to be dropping really shortly. We talked about working and getting things with guys playing NML um 
until I'm speaking to Ingrid and we've got kind of a few other sort of interviews kind of in the pipeline and stuff, uh, which is super, super exciting. And yeah, it's going to be a busy, a busy month ahead, I think. So I'm quite looking forward to it. And we'll see yeah. where we end up and we'll see people at gigs and yeah, we'll be out and about quite a bit over the next. Well, to be fair, weeks. July is quite a quiet month for gig. Well, we're nearly out of July actually, aren't we? So yeah. that's, ignore that. That has no relevance whatsoever. It has been a fairly quiet one, but as I say, there's been two or three. I say, I think I've done, I know I may have done like three or four. Yeah. And then I went up to Newark as well. I went camping to so camping. We not got any more camp. Oh, I guess you got long road for camping coming up, don't I've you? Got long road for camping. Yeah, we went to bit to the BCMA uh, band fest thing. Me and my mates and bought a paddling pool, and um, it was really hot, uh, but it was good fun. So that was cool. And yeah, we've got, obviously got National Meets London and Long Road that are pretty much just around the corner, really. And hopefully by the time next week, well, when so it's the semi final in the middle of next week, I take right, it. Right, semi final is England. Semi final is Tuesday the twenty sixth. The final is Sunday the thirty first. Well, hopefully then. So by this time next week, we'll be talking about uh, how England are in the final, rather than kind of replicating the men's and kind of being sources of eternal optimism until the point when it really sort of matters. Well, they have got to take on Sweden, potentially. That's it. I'm, I'm not quite I'm not quite fully up on, you know, women's football. But like everyone, I kind of think I've become an expert kind of over like the last like two weeks. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, everyone. Yeah, well, it's like everyone. It's like people, you know, everyone sort of thinks they sort of know and stuff, but doesn't. Here you go, look. This is, that's how big a fan I am. Oh, check you out. Check you out. Gotta, you've got to have your match day clapper. Oh, wow. But yeah, so hopefully that they'll do, well, we assume it's Sweden, but hopefully they do the business and sort of get through and we can be talking about that on episode 20. And episode yeah. Two. Yeah, well, hopefully we won't leave it too long. We won't forget to do it because now we we're going to do it. We'll do it Friday. We'll do it Friday morning again. I might have been, if I'm not. If I'm not working, then yeah. Yeah, you might be um, working. I don't know why I'm not working at the minute. Yeah. But okay. yeah, so I'll say, so that's that. That's been that's been episode 19. We've given you all that wonderful information and obviously pointing out towards with the CCMA fan vote that runs up until September. And you can go into the website, which is ccmafanvote.com and then click on the box under your choice of Tanil and you can do that every day until September. September the 11th, I think it is. I want to say September the 11th. Something I like think that. that's when the awards are, but I think the voting might sort of stop. So maybe. Yeah, it must stop midweek, mid somewhere before that. Yeah. Well, enjoy your obviously, Friday. Yeah, obviously people can vote for any of the other eight nominees. Uh, <laughs> not just your choice of Tanil. Um But yeah, so that's been episode 19, the Moussa Dembele Canadian Wonder Show. <laughs> <laughs>